this is Susan Velez from SusanVelez.com and welcome to my, my YouTube channel where I help you learn the techie side of blogging with a self-hosted WordPress blog. Now, if you're new to this YouTube channel, I recommend you subscribe and hit that like button right below. That way you can go ahead and be notified whenever I put out a new YouTube tutorial. So what this video is going to be about today is I'm going to show you how to clone your exact website, your live blog online, and bring it down to a development site. That way you can play around with it, learn it, update, do any type of updates without affecting your live site. Now, you might be wondering why you would want to do that, and I don't know about you, but if you've ever upgraded WordPress and you get a little nervous if you hit that update, is something going to happen to my site? And then you might find yourself having to go back to a previous version of WordPress because your work, your website is no longer compatible, and then you get all kinds of errors in your site. So when you bring it down to a development site, you actually are just hosting WordPress on your actual computer and you don't have to worry about affecting your live site and the great thing is that it's an actual live WordPress site but it's not on the internet it's actually just on your computer so let me show you what I mean so in order to set up a development site you're gonna need a software program that's going to allow you to host WordPress on your own computer and for the purpose of this video I'm gonna be using serverpress.com and it is a paid program um, but I really like it and I use it and I highly recommend it and it is PC and Mac compatible. Now I'm going to put the link in the description below if you want to get this one. Um, I would definitely uh, uh, recommend it. Now if you don't have the money and you want to do this then I recommend Zamp. This is one that I actually used before. I actually picked up ServerPress and it works really well. I'm not going to walk you through the system on how to install any of these because there are several YouTube videos online that will show you how to install them and get them set up. The purpose of this video is just to show you how to clone your website so that you can bring it down to your desktop into a development server and then you can play around and test it and tweak it and do whatever you want. Now the other one that is highly known is the WAMP server. Now, I've never used this one. I don't know anything about it but you can do some research and find out which ones you want to use. The WAMP and the XAMPP are both free and they are, you can see, is for Windows as well as Mac. So enough of that. So what we want to do is we want to actually log into my website. I'm going to actually log into my website. Let me, um, let me close, let me pause this real quick and log into my website. Alright, so here I am. I'm logged into my actual website and you can see that this is my live website right here. It's uh, SusanVelez.com and what we're going to do is we're going to clone this website and we're going to bring it back down onto a development server so that I can show you how easy it is to play around with your website on your desktop without messing up your live site. So in order to do this, I'm going to be using a backup buddy, the backup buddy plugin and I'm going to be making a backup, an exact duplicate of this website. And then I'm going to clone it and set it up on my desktop using serverpress.com. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do if you've never installed a plugin is you want to come into your dashboard and come over here to plugins. And we're going to be adding a new plugin and I'm going to upload the backup buddy plugin. So I'm going to browse to it and I saved it right here to my desktop. Here's backup buddy. What we want to do is we want to upload it to the computer or to the website, sorry. And um, right here, it's the backup buddy. We're going to open this and then we're going to install it. So it might take a little while to install, but once it does, the process of creating a clone for your website is actually very, very easy. So as you can see, it's done. It says unpacking, well, not completely done, but well, yeah, it is says plugin installed successfully right here. So what we want to do is we want to activate it. So we're going to activate the plugin and then what we're going to do is we're going to create an exact duplicate of this site and then we're going to take it to the development site. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to backup buddy backups and what we're going to do is we're going to delete this one. I actually have a backup right here and then we're going to just create a complete backup. We want the complete backup because we want to bring up, we want to bring down this exact website to our development site. 
So it might take a little while depending on how big your your website is. This one is not very big so it should not take very long but once that's done what we're going to do is we're going to download the backup and then we're going to install it onto ServerPress. So let me pause this video and as soon as this is done backing up I'll show you what the next step is. All right, so as you can see, everything was backed up successfully, and you'll know that it is backed up successfully because you've got all these green check marks. If it did not work, then it would give you some type of error and give you an error code of what, why it failed, and then you'd have to find out why it failed. But what we want to do once it's backed up, we want to take this download. We want to download the actual backup. Now, I've already downloaded it while this video was paused. I put it right here. But I'll go ahead and download it one more time. So we're going to download it right here. Because I think this one right here is kind of screwed up. So anyway, what we want to do is we want to... Let me get rid of this one real quick. And we're just going to go with the backup on the downloads. So what we want to do is we want to install this onto our desktop. So what I mean by that is I'm using De Desktop Server Pro. And as you can see right now it does not have any sites on it right here. Because if I had some sites, you would see the, the name of the site and then it would tell you, it would give you to log in, view the database, as well as the dashboard. So now that that backup has downloaded, what we want to do is we want to just go ahead and close this out. We're going to log out of the live site, close that out, and then we're going to install this onto our desktop. So as you can see, Desktop Server Pro allows you to create a new development site, export, import, or share a website. And this is the one that we want to do. We want to do the export, import, or share a website because we're going to be importing an actual website. So once you click on this little radio button, you'll click on Next, and we're going to import an existing website archive. So we're going to click on Next, and then we're going to find the import file. So the import file is on my downloads. So we're going to come over here to downloads and then we're going to find it right here. This is the one that I created. You can see it was created today at 710. So we're going to grab that and then we're going to change this name. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to go ahead and give it the same name as my live site. But you can see that the extension on it is .dev. So this is just the development site. So you can tell it's actual development site because you have the .dev extension. And then it's going to save it to my computers and to my computer and you can see that it's going to be saved inside of my documents inside of a folder called websites. Now, you can change this to whatever you want, but I just leave it as the default. And then I'm just going to click on next. And then it's going to go in there and it's going to actually recreate that website from the exact clone from the live site. And as soon as this is done, I'm actually going to come back and show you that it is indeed in, has been created on my live or on my desktop and it looks exactly like my live site. So I'll be back in a bit as soon as this is done. All right, so as you can see, it says that the process has been completed. So now what we want to do is we want to come over here as you remember right here when I was on localhost, this is how you see what websites you have. You click on it again and you can see that my site is right here and it says susanvelez.dev. So what we want to do is we want to go to the next and you can see your website is now ready. Please be sure to test your website thoroughly. Use the link below to go to your website now. So we're going to go ahead and go to this link and we're going to see what it looks like. So it's going to open up in Safari and you can see this is my actual website and it looks just like my my live site. So in order, but the only difference is right here, it's got the de, .dev development website or the extension, sorry. And what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and log in. So we're gonna log into it. And then you can see the great thing about ServerPress is that it allows you to bypass without you having to put in your login information. And so it's very easy to do. All you do is hit remember me and then you'll choose your login information and let me um, go ahead and log in real quick and it might take a little bit of time to do this because the first couple times it's a little picky but once it does it actually remembers your login information uncheck that there we go logging in okay so now you can see that it is 
I am logged in and you get a couple of, of errors from the Yoast SEO plugin, but that's because um, you're not connected to the internet. So a lot of this stuff is not gonna work. So what I like to do when I'm actually inside of my development site is I actually deactivate a couple, a few of my plugins. So what I like to deactivate is I'm actually going to deactivate the uh, Social Warfare plugin. I'll deactivate that one. And then I also like to go ahead and just, I think that's all I'm gonna actually deactivate. So let me show you how it looks. So side by side by my live site. So this is the development site. And then in this browser, let me open up Chrome. So I'm gonna open up Chrome. And then I'm gonna show you what my live site looks like. So, okay. So now we'll go to my live site. And we don't wanna to go to the blog, we just wanna to go to the homepage. And then this is the actual live site. So now you can see that they are the same exact thing right here side by side. You might see a couple of discrepancies on the uh, social shares, but that's not an issue. Um, that's only because it's on the actual server, whereas this one is not. So you can see it's just an exact clone of my live site. So now the only difference is that this one is not hosted live. So any changes you make to this one will not affect this one until you actually push the changes to your live site. So you can see right here, let's go to view all posts and then you'll see right here, view all posts. And then you can see that it's the exact same thing. Of course, like I said, some things are different because you're not actually connected to the um, internet anymore. But now this site, anything you want to play around with, if you wanted to change the color of these to kind of change your color code, you can play around with it on your, on your local server and test stuff out. And what I like to do is I actually like to make all my changes to my local server and then if everything is correct and the way I want it looks exactly the way I want it and is compatible with the version of WordPress that I'm using, then I will push it to my live site. And this site doesn't ever have to worry about getting knocked down because I made a change or a tweet or I updated a plugin that was not compatible with my version of WordPress. And another cool thing about this is that you, whether you actually do this or not, you don't have to worry about not having a backup. You can actually keep this on your website and if anything happens to or on your computer and if anything happens to your live site, you've always got a backup as long as you keep this consistent with this one with your live site. So as far as installing WordPress the way I did on XAMPP and WAMP, it's going to be totally different. Um, I don't think you'll be able to use the Backup Buddy web uh, plugin to make a uh, exact duplicate and clone it just the way I did on on serverpress but you can use these to duplicate your live site and then play around with this test it tweak it and you don't have to worry about bringing down your live site because you've got a development site so anyway i hope this youtube video was a uh, tutorial was helpful on helping you get a development site set up on your own computer so that way you can test stuff out what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave a link to all these websites as well as the Backup Buddy plugin in the download description or in the description below. And if you uh, need any help or have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll help you out as best as I can. I'll talk to you later and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll be bringing more tutorials your way to help you learn the techie side of blogging. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.